Hey there everybody, today we are going to be going through the dreaded settings page and covering the ones that I think are the most important to either enhancing your game experience or giving a neat twist or increase of difficulty to your challenge or to your games to make them more entertaining and interesting to you. So the first thing that I want to point out here is I know that the settings page is not very fun to look at, especially if you're not very experienced with OTP. I honestly probably logged 100 hours of play before I actually really got in or got into the settings page at all, in all honesty, uh, because it is a lot to deal with. So today I'm just going to cover the most important ones that I would recommend to new players and to everybody as well, the settings that I believe are the best. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the global settings, and we've got the scouting page here. So normally... Scouting accuracy, if you get a highly favored tool scout, if you put money into your scouting budget, even if you don't sometimes, if you get a good scout, you're going to get accurate reads pretty much no matter what. So what I recommend doing is turning your scouting accuracy down from normal to very low. This might actually make it kind of difficult to get a read on some players. And if you do that, uh, then you will be forced to rely more on statistics like you would in real baseball rather than just being able to lean heavily on scouting in order to um, essentially reliably scoop up the ideal player that you're looking for. There are plenty of times where having inaccurate scouting can actually damage your ability to compete, and that's pretty realistic. So if you're looking for a new level of challenge, lowering that scouting accuracy, I, even just a normal low, is... Um, it can make a game much more interesting to deal with and force you to put more money into your scouting budget. Next thing that I recommend, and I recommend this to everybody as a quality of life thing, is to disable relative ratings. I talk about this a lot. Uh, relative ratings are useful for one thing and one thing only, and that is if you are a new player trying to see how uh, prospects will do in different levels, you can turn on relative ratings to that level and then get an idea of how that player compares against average, which would be about 50. But what relative ratings really do is just distort how you look at a player. So let's say you get a player that's got like 50 avoid Ks. You think, okay, well, they're average at avoiding striking out. But in reality, your league is just really deprived of avoid Ks, so they might be as low as 35, in which case you're thinking you're getting a guy who won't strike out much, but he's still likely to strike out a whole lot. And that's really where relative ratings can kind of mess you up. They also can distort the idea of what you're looking at. So, for example, if you have low avoid Ks in a league, but high BABIP, you could have a guy with, like, 50 avoid Ks and 50 contacts. So you think, okay, well, his BABIP isn't great, but his avoid Ks is. But in reality, he might have, like, 65 avoid Ks and 35, uh, or 65 BABIP and 35 avoid Ks, or even higher BABIP just because of how crazy um, relative ratings can be in some cases. Uh, the next thing that I would recommend, and this is another thing to add a challenge to your game, is to go to the Players and Face Gen page and turn your injury frequency up to high, realistic modern day. Now, generally, fragile players even are not actually that big of a deal. I know a lot of people like to avoid fragile players, I know everyone likes to avoid rec players, but I am perfectly fine running fragile players. If they play 120 games a season versus like 140, I'm perfectly content with that. They're still going to be extremely productive for me. And if you've got a little bit of depth, you make up for those 20 lost games. Now, on the other hand, if you got a fragile player only playing 100 games for you, that really makes you think about the value of that player and about the importance of depth. Now, it's probably not that extreme a difference. I haven't tested it extensively enough to know, but increasing your injury frequency can make things interesting in terms of um, how you're going to navigate injury and deal with players who are more injury prone. So if you're looking for a challenge, you can increase it. And very high could be a really difficult challenge for certain people, greatly increasing the importance of durable players. The next thing uh, that I recommend, and this is a quality of life thing, is to click the show player personality ratings on profile page. This is incredibly important. Uh, player personalities are actually one of the game's core ways for players to develop and interact with other players, which can greatly affect your team's success 
and your team chemistry. So it is very important that you're able to see a player's personalities and be able to use that to identify or help yourself evaluate a player. So again, to everybody, I recommend turning player personalities ratings on under settings, players and face gen, uh, just something everyone's going to want to do to help them greatly. Another thing you can do for a challenge or just to spice your league up is to change your talent change randomness to one 35. 100 is default, so what this means is you're going to have more no-name prospects turning into stars and more high-end prospects flopping. Now in OATP with 100 talent change randomness, uh, you'll see a few top really young prospects flop and a handful of guys rise up, but it's not nearly as reflective as it is in real baseball, for example, of the number of top prospects that'll fail or even stars that suddenly just flare out and uh, young players who maybe weren't such great prospects before suddenly finding something and turning into studs. So increasing that challenge change randomness can give you that degree of uncertainty when it comes to players, making uh, those lottery ticket prospects a lot more valuable and those so sure prospects maybe a little less so. Uh, another thing you can do to give yourself a challenge go to your league settings everything else is going to be under league settings here and under rules i would recommend if you're really looking for a challenge to lower the 40 man roster size to 38 37 even down to 35 now what this is going to do is really make you think about how you're using those 40 man roster slots is it okay to have players that are there just for depth on there are you going to have to be more active in waving and DFAing players in order to make room on your roster? Are you going to be looking at protecting different players from the Rule 5 draft? The Rule 5 draft is going to become a lot bigger talent pool if you decrease that, which makes it a much bigger event in the year as well. So there's a lot of factors with decreasing the 40-man roster size that can make it quite interesting. Another thing I recommend, and this is a quality of life thing, is disable the right to refuse a minor league assignment. That's not really realistic, uh, this rule being unclicked in my opinion. If you've got a 40-year-old guy who just sucks, you're DFAing him, you don't want him on your roster anymore, you can refuse going down to the minors, and then you're basically forced to release him. But they will generally not do that. They will Sometimes teams will grant them release, but it's not... A sure thing that they are released outright instead of being forced down to the minors so I believe you should have the option to be able to force your players down to the minors that's something I recommend everyone do it's just a little bit of an annoying thing that you don't have to worry about uh, another thing and I recommend everybody click this this is something that was a big annoyance for me before I started going through the settings page allow trading of injured players so if a player is out for more than seven days, which can't even be like a 10-day injury, nothing too serious, you can't trade them. Especially in leagues where players get injured a lot, which minor injuries, they happen. Um, this setting can greatly impact your ability to make trades. And more importantly, it's just totally unrealistic. The only reason to have this on is... I mean, honestly, I can't even think of a reason to have this on. You should be able to trade injured players. It's kind of stupid that that's off by default. I highly recommend everyone come into league settings, rules, and allow trading of injured players. It's just, it is almost a no-brainer. It's going to improve your league's quality greatly. Another thing you can do to spice your league up is allow draft pick trading. Now, the AI does not trade draft picks cheap. Uh, think about any sport that actually has draft pick trading. Football basketball etc you can generally get draft picks relatively cheap not that's super cheap of course but like an mlb or a a uh, an nfl star you could easily get a draft pick for a first rounder or even more than that and in those sports your draft picks are immediately going to be important to your team. You take a first rounder in the middle, or a guy in the middle of the first round in the NFL, you expect that guy to be on your team pretty much day one, and it, you, there's a good chance that they're an impactful player for your franchise for years to come. In baseball, draft picks are not so sure. So it's a big deal, or it's they you think they would be less valuable. And baseball does have draft pick trading, of course. You can trade your compensation picks 
or your um I, i'm not sure if they're called compensation picks or uh the the competitive balance picks that's what they're called you could trade those and they're generally not valued that highly. So it's interesting that in OTP, draft picks are very difficult to trade for. It is spi- uh, It adds a level of spice to your league, and there is, of course, sometimes reason still to trade for draft picks, um, but it's just a, a nice little thing you can try out sometimes. Another thing that I recommend is make sure you are generating plenty of players for your draft. Um, or set up feeder leagues, which is something I'll cover another time. But So, for example, here I have 25 amateur draft rounds. I'll just set that to 30. I would always recommend having at least 50% more players generated, or more rounds generated than you have rounds. So, for example, this would be 45. That's uh, 150% of 30. This is going to allow your drafts to feel a lot more interesting. You're going to have more talent, especially at the top, so you'll have impactful players in the draft. And you're also going to have a deeper draft. It won't get boring after two to three rounds, and you just won't have any good players left, so you auto-draft. There will still be good players into the ten or the double-digit rounds sometimes, and even further uh, occasionally. Feeder leagues are useful. I always recommend generating at least some players for your draft in addition to having feeder leagues, but if you really want to have a deep draft, that's going to be interesting all the way through. Double Generate double uh, the number of players as you have rounds. That can really spice your draft up. And uh, last, but certainly not least, oh, actually, second to last, go under the financials page it looks like I actually do not have financials enabled in this uh, league yet, so I'll have to switch over to a different league really quick. All right, here we are. So one thing I recommend doing is go down on the financials page and the compensation for lost free agents. This is uh, something you can actually mess around with. I think that there are a couple of cool things you can do here. Um, now, of course, the modern compensation, you get... Or the team signing a player forfeits a draft pick, you get a draft pick in the early rounds, but not super early. Now, of course, you remember Moneyball. Uh, for anyone who's read or watched Moneyball, I'm not actually sure if it's in the movie, but if you've read Moneyball, you have players... Um, three. The A's lost three players to free agency. Both of them were type A free agents, or all three of them were type, free, type A free agents, and they all end up signing for enough money that the A's get not only a compensation pick in the first round, but they also get the first round picks from the teams that sign them. So this can really spice it up and make it much more difficult to sign free agents without losing a significant amount of draft talent. Or you get a lot of draft talent back by allowing free agents to walk in the AB system. Now this is also an interesting system, the first round draft picks, and the cash compensation from the MPB is worth trying out as well. If uh, free agency is something you want to mess around with a little bit, the compensation for lost free agents can absolutely add some fun to the free agency process and, of course, to the draft process to give you a few options to um, change things up. Now, the last thing that I recommend is going to the Players tab and increasing your player generations, all of them to a lot. Um, This is going to be... A good way to get more talent to your league first and foremost but also you're not really going to see meaningful players in any of these if you do not crank them up literally all the way to a lot you'll get a few now and then but this is a way to ensure that you have somebody interesting every single international amateur signing period every single uh end of the season when you get generated players from other leagues coming in from the international spectrum and another thing I recommend doing is disable the international amateur hard signing cap. This is just annoying. Uh, this will allow you to sign players for as much as you want, although at the price of massive amounts of cash and being unable to sign players potentially the next season or restrictions on how you can sign players next season. So yeah, uh, those are the settings that I like to change the most and things that I think are either interesting or really important to gameplay. I hope this video was helpful for you guys, and I'll see you all in the next one.